Hello lovely listeners, welcome back to the Simple Joy Show. Now getting your family in on the decluttering journey isn't the easiest task, but actually a group effort is the best way to reduce your at-home stress and clutter. So how do you encourage your family to declutter? Whether your house is full of stuff that you want to get rid of, or you just want to teach your children about the value of living with less, there's lots of different ways that you can make it fun and encourage your family to see your perspective and get them on board with your decluttering journey. And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about in today's episode. This is The Simple Joy Show, the podcast for people who are ready to declutter and simplify their homes and lives to create more space, time, energy and freedom. I am your host, Hayley Forster, mother, wife and declutter coach, and I'm going to be sharing with you simple bite-sized nuggets to help you on your journey to living a simpler life through the power of decluttering. So if you're ready to choose calm over chaos, then let's dive into today's show. Hello everybody, how are you all? Hope you are good. We're building up to a half-term holiday here in the Forster household Um, and everyone seems to have been on half-term holiday this week um, except us for some reason. Our children are off next week for a week which is nice. We've got um, Halloween in the middle of the of the holiday which is lovely. Um, So we've got some nice family activities planned. We'll probably go pumpkin picking. There's a Halloween maze near us that we're going to visit at the weekend as well. And yeah, lots of lovely festive activities, which will be fun. But one of the other things we will be doing during our half term, which is definitely not as exciting as pumpkin picking and Halloween mazes, is doing a little bit of decluttering and I'll be getting the girls involved. But actually inspiring your family and your household in general to simplify and declutter actually is is quite a big task. It's not something that is easy, especially when you've got a lot of different personalities and attachments at play as well. But with a little bit of patience and understanding and just working together, it actually can be quite a fun family activity to do. It's took me a few years to kind of grasp how to get the children on board because they have got very individual personalities. My oldest doesn't have a lot of emotional attachment to things but she is very messy. She's the type of child that will play and craft with things and then decide when she's finished she just gets up and walks off and she leaves things wherever they were. So you can imagine, <laughs> you can imagine how well that sits with me. Um, but yeah, it's it's took a, a few years of trying to get her into the mindset of right. I've finished with this now. I can move on to something else. But before I do, I need to finish this exercise by putting the things away that I've been using and playing with. Um, and it's took us a while, and we're still trying to manage it. Um, particularly in our bedroom. Her bedroom is atrocious. <laughs> it is a very messy bedroom and she's 12. Like I get it. It's part of growing up and that's fine. But I really want her to take responsibility of her own space and try and understand what clutter is and how to process it and to just have a nice living environment so that's something that we're trying to tackle with my oldest now my youngest she is she's not as messy um, and she's very good at if you say go and tidy your room or can you clear this away um, she will just get up and do it but her little thing is more sentimentality so she has a lot of things that she likes to keep for memory's sake. So she's very like me when I was little um, and she'll keep little mementos and she loves writing comics and drawing pictures and she loves keeping all the drafts and everything like that. So with her it's a little bit more of a different challenge because it's more about understanding the connections and the attachments she's got with her items and how to process those with her as well so two very different children two very different personalities and challenges um, that we need to navigate through that but as I say it's a learning process it's something that we've been doing for a few years now and with just a little bit of patience and understanding and just trying to do things together collectively as a family actually we, we get on all right with it 
but today I just want to give you a few little snippets and ideas about how you can navigate inspiring the family to embrace your decluttering and how you can get them on the journey with you. So the first idea I have is just first up be honest and share the vision with them. Start communicating about why you want to do it because there's one thing saying we need to declutter, we need to clean this house, we need to sort it out. And it's another to actually say, imagine what our home would feel like, where we could easily find our things. We're not getting into little arguments because we're struggling to find the things that we want and we want to play with. We've got enough space to play and generally we feel more relaxed. So try and paint a really vivid picture for them that resonates with what each family member would want. If you've got young children, focus on the, the ability to find their toys and play with them. If you've got older children, talk about the things that they enjoy doing and being able to have more time and space to be able to, to focus on that. Because ultimately everyone has got unique motivations. The reason why I wanted to clutter might be very different to Susan down the road. So perhaps your teenager wants a more streamlined bedroom so that they can get more involved with their hobbies or be able to handle their homework more. I don't think that's a worry for my daughter who doesn't enjoy homework at all. Um, <laughs> but for some, it can be a, a major thing where they don't really have anywhere to, to sit and do their homework and they don't have anywhere to keep their books, their pens, anything like that. So that could be a real motivator for them as well. So what you want to do is just tailor the vision for each of your family members and their aspirations and what they're wanting to do and how they want to use the spaces in their home. And you can also use that knowledge to personalise the process as well. So perhaps your younger child loves the idea of doing treasure hunts. So you could use the process as a, oh, let's find the treasure that we're going to give to the charity shop and we're going to donate to other people who are in need. And you can tailor the approach to each family member's interests as well. The second idea is to just create a little bit of a game plan. So try and define your roles in the decluttering process. So are certain people in charge of certain rooms? What's the timeline? What's your expectations of when things have to be done by? And then just break the process down into much smaller manageable tasks and then set them little goals so that they don't get overwhelmed. And this is something that I really had to manage with my eldest child. Um, because if I would just say to her, look, your room really needs a declutter and it needs a sort out, it's very messy, she would either get so overwhelmed to the point that she just wouldn't do it or she would sit in her room and she would get upset. And neither of those things I wanted to happen. So what we had to do was just really break it down and just say, look, you're in charge of this room. I would like you to have this room sorted by two o'clock or by the end of the day. Now let's start with some smaller projects. So first of all, let's look at the clothes. Sort through your clothes, get all your clothes into one pile. Anything that's um, dirty, needs washing, goes in the, the laundry basket. Anything that is clean and needs to be put away, needs to go into your wardrobe and just break it down into much smaller manageable chunks. And then that makes it much easier for them to process and actually want to start in the first place. And actually by doing that with my older child, she gets so much more done and she gets it done so much quicker because she isn't just stood in her room thinking, well, where on earth do I start? And we're trying to get to the point where her room doesn't get into such a state so that it does become overwhelming for her. It's about really understanding um, an ongoing maintenance thing with her, which is something that we are battling through at the moment. But just know that you're not alone if, if this is something that you're struggling with with your children, particularly when they get into the teen years. It's very difficult for them to understand the responsibility of owning items and looking after things and being responsible for putting things away, etc. So, yeah, it's, it's an ongoing challenge, but these are some of the things that I find really work for us. The third idea is try making it fun so you could set up little family challenges. So, for example, you can say, right, who can collect the most things in 10 minutes to declutter or to donate? Or you could say that, as a family, can we collectively find 
50 things to donate this weekend that we can get out of the house. You could try making them nice, small, manageable again to kick it and get it quite competitive. Um, or if you're really thinking about wanting to do something longer term, um, I have got the 30 day decluttering challenge. I'll add the link in the show notes. And that's where you do a small decluttering task every day for 30 days and you can get the whole family involved so get them involved in each of the different areas or you can say right Tuesdays your task Thursdays your task this is what we're doing um, so get them all involved in that as well don't just feel that because you sign up to a 30 day challenge that all of it falls on your shoulders get them involved and get them passionate about it as well one thing I would touch upon, and this is something that I touched on in the last episode as well, is just have a little bit of respect um, for other people's items. Yes, it's important to declutter, but it's also really crucial for you to respect people's personal spaces and their personal possessions. So what you can do is just let each family member take charge of their own areas. If there's certain areas of your teenager's room that they want to do themselves, then let them do that. Perhaps you can guide them and assist them if they need that help or they're struggling to declutter things, then get involved. But don't just go straight into the room of your husband or your child and just start getting rid of stuff without them asking. Obviously, if they're younger children, then you've got much more sway in the things that they own anyway. Um, But perhaps when they're a little bit older, you might want to give them the autonomy to focus on some of their own things themselves give them the chance to sort through it and if they're struggling then you can step in and guide them and help them at that point another thing you can do is celebrate the wins so whether they have decluttered a drawer or they've organized their wardrobe what you want to do is try and celebrate those little victories whether they're big or whether they're small depending on what stage they're at With my children, particularly my eldest, as I say, even if she does something quite small, we like to try and do a little reward so that then she gets the motivation to keep going because she does find it quite difficult. So perhaps you could suggest things like a family movie night or a special outing. You could go out to the cinema or you go to the park just as a little reward for the, the family collective effort that they've been putting into the decluttering process as well, which is really nice. We like to sit as a family and, and watch a movie and perhaps get a pizza in. We call them pizza pizza parties, um, <laughs> which we really enjoy doing. Now, if you have much more of a bigger task at hand, uh, so you're wanting to really declutter your whole house and there is a lot of clutter to process um, and it becomes much more of a, a longer term project, what you want to do is try and make it much more of a routine so you could set up regular family check-ins and just say how are we getting on let's keep the momentum going and then it's just a chance for you to just reassess where you're at what you've managed to do what's not working and to celebrate what you have done as well and it just keeps that momentum going and really just ensures that it's top of mind for your family members that they understand that this is a journey and it's something that that you're on together and it becomes a part of the family culture at that point and they understand what they're doing why they're doing it and it's something that you're all doing together to get to that end point of back to those aspirations that we talked about at the beginning And then finally, just some little maintenance tips. You could set out some little family rules that your family members have to follow. So for example, no one leaves the dinner table without taking their dishes and putting them in the dishwasher. Or you can't go to bed without tidying up your toys before you go. Things like that. And that just helps the children understand what they need to do at certain times to maintain things as you need them to be. I also recommend doing a big declutter near any of the children's birthdays or Christmas times as it really just helps create space and more organised order for anything new that's coming into your home. Because when children have too much stuff, they just become overwhelmed. It's really hard for them to get things out to play with them and it's really hard for them to put things away. So having a declutter and a sort out before those special occasions can really sort it. And actually the girls love doing that. I'll just say, right, Christmas is coming up. Let's have a little declutter. Let's see what space we can create because Santa's going to 
bring you some nice gifts and we need to make sure that there's space in the house so that we can keep them all nice and the girls really enjoy doing that and it's become a little tradition for us as well so the girls expect it and the last thing I would say is that if your family is really messy and it's causing you to become really overwhelmed just sit them down talk to them about it explain your feelings share any ideas that you've got about how you can make it better for the future and just set some realistic goals with your family about what's acceptable what is okay for you as a, a normal level of mess what is classed as too much to you and what is overwhelming for you and perhaps what chores that they can take on to help tackle these areas around the home and you can even set up some little family trackers as well which can be something that can really help and get them to take responsibility for the space so they don't just see the home as something that mummy and daddy sort out it's something that they're all involved with and they're involved in the upkeep and the maintenance of it as well and they become much more respectable of the place so hopefully this has been helpful and just remember decluttering as a family isn't just about letting go of stuff it's really about strengthening those family bonds understanding each other understanding each other's triggers and their goals and their aspiration and just being able together to create a, a harmonious home where everyone can feel relaxed and comfortable in. So thank you for joining me today on the Simple Joy Show. I'm always eager to hear about your stories so let me know if you've been able to get your family on board with your decluttering journey. I'd love to hear how you did it share your experiences, your challenges and your victories. Come into my Facebook group, The Simple Living Society, and you can share those with my community. But until next time, cherish the journey and the joy it brings, and I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you so much for listening. If you've enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the Simple Joy Show further, then please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review. To catch all the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Hello Simple Joy. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.